Hello, I'm Dr. Ola Kammerdiner. Welcome to Discrete Event Simulation. This is Lecture 11, Modeling Basic Operations and Inputs in Arena. I will talk about how to enhance animation and also basic modeling of entity transfer. So, what we will do today is we will consider Model 4.3, which is an extension of Model 4.2 from the book. In this model, we will be enhancing animation. So, as you noticed, when we were creating our models, some default animation is being created for some of the things, such as cues or connector animation movements. And this type of animation is usually sufficient for verification and validation. However, default queue animation can be misleading. For example, the number of entities displayed is limited by queue length. And if you wanted to display all entities, there are three ways to do that. We could uh, introduce an animation variable for the number in queue, or which is a length queue, for a given queue. Or we can increase the size of animation queue, or we can decrease size of entity picture. So we can also, when changing the animation, we can pull animation away from logic in the model window, and that's especially useful for large and uh, complex models with complex animation. In this case, it's often useful to have named views different for model logic or animation and different close-up views. And I will show you how to create those named views. So default animation objects are connected to the model logic and move with the module. There are identifiers, physical location, so you need to shift and drag to decouple them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some changing for animation of the cues. We're gonna lengthen those. We also will rotate or reorient. We can change the form of the cue as well, and our default cue animation is uh, represented by the line, but we can change it to a point which provides fixed places for entities to stay. And in order to do that, you can just simply double click on the queue and then change the type from the line to the point, and then click on points and successively click add points and then OK. You can also drag them around on the screen and check Rotate box to show entities turning. So let me go ahead and demonstrate it. So here I opened my model 4.3, uh, actually 4.2 in Arena, and then changed it, renamed it into 4.3. So please also open Arena and you can try following of what I'm doing as I speak. So again, right, this is just a model 4.2. I simply saved it as model 4.3. And you can save it by clicking File, Save, or Save As. Um, so in this case, because we're renaming, you want to click File, Save As, and then save it as 4.3 from the book. So the first thing I want to demonstrate is how to create named views here. So I could, for example, um, change this a little bit, maybe increase zoom to, let's say, 62. Um, and this could be my model view. So I click on view and then name views. And here I'm going to have named views. I can add additional view. And so this is going to be my model view. And it, it can introduce a hotkey, say M. So when I press an M button, this will lead me back to this view. So now I have this additional view. So this is fine, right? And so I can close it either here or here. And so the next thing, right, if I, for example, reduce zoom, or moved around somewhere and then I click on M 
see it again pops me right at the right zoom and r zooms in directly on the views that I had before of my model. So the next thing I want to do is create and also notice on the navigate now I have this model view. So I want to introduce another view because I will be changing my um, animation. So I'm going to introduce a view where I'll have my animation represented. So that's what I'm going to do next. So to do that, I'm going to um, move this down and have this space here for, for my animation. And so uh, I can go and select the view again and then name views or alternatively I could find this here right and this is on the panel right this is a panel that is called a um, view panel right so if I unclick it I don't have it anymore then I can click it back and here's where I have uh, my views right and also my zoom if I wanted the grid, right, all of it is in this panel. So I can click here alternatively, right, and this is where I have my named views. I can add another view, and this is going to be my animation view. And I'll have a hotkey for it, A, so whenever I press on A, it will lead me back to my animation view. And notice right now it changes in the navigate I now have animation view. So let me go ahead and copy and paste some of the things that I would want to have to just enhance the animation. So I'm going to have this to represent the system so it's a little enhancement for the animation. Um, so this is just some pictures so the parts are going to be arriving. Uh, parts A from here, parts B from here, and this is where the parts, different parts are going to be leaving the system. So all of this um, is just an enhancement for the, my animation. So now if I wanted to go back to the model, I just press M button, or alternatively, right, I could be switching from the views, right, and the na name views, right, if I want to go back to animation, I can say show, right, and again, right, could go here and say back to the model show, right, or I can be using A and M, which I'm doing now, I'm just pressing A and M buttons on uh, my keyboard. So the next thing I want to do is I want to grab some of the cues and pull them out, right? So this is an default animations for my prep A process. So I'm going to pull it up and also remove the prep B process as well and pull it up um, and remove the sealer process, pull it up and the rework process and pull it up. and my intention is to move them into the animation uh, view and I also will lengthen some of them to allow, so this is my prep A, I want to lengthen that nicely so it's long and it has more space for my parts A to wait and also I'll do the similar thing for parts, parts B so here's my parts B. Of course, having a grid probably would make the whole task easier for me. So I could snap the grid if I wanted to. And then maybe it will be a little simpler to in terms of aligning things. And so again, snap this to the grid a little more. And um, the next thing I want to do is move the sealer process queue somewhere here in between. And probably pull this uh, as well to make it longer. Maybe extend this one as well a little bit. 
than this one. And, and now for the rework process, I also want to move it here. And a rework process has the regs. As you remember, we introduced the regs for rework process. So, um, you know, if I wanted to, I could extend it to have more uh, lens for this queue. But I actually would much rather have the um, have it changed right so I can double click on it and change it from the type having type as a line and you can see this is demonstrated here to the point um, and then I could click on points in order to add points if I wanted to um, could be able to rotate if I wanted to um, so this is again for my rework process queue so could start with uh, um, I could change them as well right so I I could be adding and then the second one and a third fourth fifth six seven eight nine ten and then for my 11 one, I'm going to change it to say here and then continue adding Oops, let's say zero here. And so 30 points will be enough for three racks, right? If I wanted to add more, I would add another 10 points for another rack. So this one didn't really do some of the rotations that I wanted to do um, and I also wanted to demonstrate to you right I could start just moving and changing them um, one by one which um, would take some time but I can do that again moving them so one two three four five six seven eight she should be still there that one nine and so on or I can just get rid of this and do it um, my own right through the animate toolbar so again here right we have animate toolbar so you can see here I can add it back this animate panel or animate toolbar and uh, this is where I can animate my queue so I could click on this I can select which one I want to change right I already have prep A prep B and sealer process queues so now I want to redo this rework process I want my uh, queue as a point and so I could start doing that right so let's see I'm gonna start here three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
26, 27, 28, 29, 30. If I wanted the force rack, I need another f uh, 10 points. So 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. And so you can see, right, this is a very pretty cue that we just did, right, where each point has a space for us to wait. And if you double click on it, you'll get this dialog, right, where you can check how many points you got, right? So starts with one, then you see we're moving through, moving through. And so all together, got 41 points for some reason. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So what about this one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Looks like actually we have um, everything correct, right? So you can check, right? This is just the final one. So you can check the number of points there, right? So this is our queue for the rework process queue. If I wanted to move it a little bit, maybe this is better place for the rework queue, right? I can move it here. Um, and of course I could move the sealer process queue as well. Um, so this just illustrates on what we can do to enhance the queue animation. So now, please do this on your own. Pull all four cues away from your logic in Model 4.2 to enhance the animation of your cues in Model 4.2. So you're changing your Model 4.2 to 4.3. You also want to extend the prep A and prep B processes, just like I showed it, and make rework process queue in the point queue. Um, so please do what I demonstrated as your individual task. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change entity pictures. And so the different initial pictures can be assigned to different entity types in the entity data module. And you already saw me previously change report into red balls, right, and um, blue balls for different types of parts, parts A and parts B. And so in, we can actually change entity pictures in picture libraries and picture library files have extension .plb so there you can customize list, alter picture in it and so on so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to edit entity pictures to change this uh, list and alter pictures in it so let me go ahead and demonstrate that So now I'd like to demonstrate to you how we can um, add um, and enhance entity pictures. So again, I'm back in Arena. I'm going to go in my Arena model. I'm going to go to Edit and then Entity Pictures. And that takes me to the current library. So my current library is Basic Process, PLB. So if I want to change it, I can do that, right? And I can later save it as well. So in the basic process library, I will add additional. Um, and again, I can open a different library if I wanted to, right? I just click open and then select whatever um, library I want. Keep in mind that library files have extension PLB. So instead of basic process, I could check buildings, contact center, and um, equipment, extras, and so on. So I'm not going to do that. I'll just use the basic process library. So right now I'm at the end of the basic process library. I could add, um, if I press add, it just adds an empty, empty, um, Part, which then I can edit which, however I want. 
Um, or I can copy something. For example, we had red balls and blue balls, so I can just copy blue ball by selecting the picture right on the left hand side and then pressing the copy and then it will appear at the end there additionally so I could copy my uh, picture or I can press add so I copied it so now uh, it needs or I can do the add doesn't seem to want to copy um, so now um, well, let me delete some of those at extra ones So again, right, I added I added the picture of the ball, right, by pressing this button. And now I'm going to change this, but I also will add another picture of a blue ball. Um, so I add the picture of blue ball, another here, and then replace, because it replaced my other picture. Right, I'm adding the red picture. So I'm going to edit first the red picture, and I'm going to then added the black picture um, so for now um, I'm gonna do that in order to um, have my parts A and B there so let me go ahead and uh, change um, the blue ball um, to add part A because blue balls represented part part A so we're gonna add the letter A there uh, so again I'd like to maybe um, get a little closer to it maybe increase the size so that it will be easier for me to edit it and and then I can here right add the text and this is my text I want to have a letter A to represent part A and if I left it like that it would it could be too small um, actually let me demonstrate it would be too small if I just added it like that like this um, so I could go in and I can increase my font and also make it bolder so let's say to 24 and then I do OK and now it's much larger And um, I could also change the color, so um, maybe the white letter will really stand out on this blue circle. So I do OK. Now I close it, and it saves it in there. So you can see now it's uh, A. And then I'll do the same for the red one. I double click to edit it. Um, and I'll just center it a little bit so I can zoom on it better and now that it's zoomed in I can add a letter again pressing here to add the text and this will be part B so I have part B and I go right away change it to bold change this to 24 do OK I'm gonna place my letter B here Again, this is my B, and uh, maybe the black letter would stand out even more on the red. So let's change it back. Oops, uh, the wrong part. So was or gray? Was it gray before? I don't remember. Um, and let's change this letter. It's 
black. And let's see how much different it is. So now we got A and the part B um, and the new pictures. So now I can say OK and then save it. So current library has been modified. Do you want to save it? I say yes. And I actually want to save it in um, another folder. So I'm going to go into my folder and save it in my models folder and then say OK and now I can use this later right so I can go back to my model and I can use this those different pictures in my um, and my for my entities I just need to do some changes there and this is um, just some final changes for entity pictures so now that I have it in my library I can also use them here as well so I select I select A and then I press click here and I add this one and it says valid picture ball. I actually want to have it as part A and then I also gonna have additional one and I'm gonna add it So I'm going to edit again, um, I'm going to edit Entity Pictures in order to replace blue ball and red ball in part A and B with those parts. So I'm going to go here to edit entity pictures and then I will um, make sure that I'm at the very end there and then select the A and then move my A here and change the name from picture bowl to this value right so I need to change the value I make it um, into picture part A and then after that I'm gonna select B, right? Make sure that it's at the end there, and then click here um, and change this to part B. Part B. So now we have part A, picture dot part A as a value, and picture part dot part B as a value, and I say OK, and we should be able to change it here. Right, so even though we don't have it in terms of the part, we can still use it. So I'm going to change this to part A and then change this to oops, part B. And then demonstrate to you that that's actually what happens, right? So I can show you by running, quickly running a simulation that you'll see this. But to make sure that you can see it well, let's increase it a little bit. Uh, maybe that's a little too much. So this should help you see what happens.
So you can see the A balls going through and the B balls going through. So let's just fast forward it through. We don't want to see the results just yet and finish it. So this demonstrates that we just changed the entity pictures. So now following directions on this slide, I want you to individually do this yourself. So basically just do similar things that I just demonstrated to you. And so another thing that I wanted to show you is how to uh, animate your source. So you saw an animate toolbar where we used it to animate cues. There is not right near, nearby there is this button here which is known as resource button and that's where you can get the resource picture um, added to your animation. So again what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go through all this and um, change, do some changes to resource pictures so you can um, also change pictures in, in the picture libraries similarly to the entity pictures and you can copy over and then change those and so let's go ahead and well, let me go ahead and demonstrate how to do that so we have um, our model so let's go ahead and press M so that it's smaller so it's gonna zoom um, out Oops, I'm changing. This was selected. I don't want to do that. So I just press escape. And then the next thing I'll do is I'm just going to do this here. So now I'm back um, and I press M and I, um, I'm back to my model. So what I want to do is I want to go to my animation and I want to introduce the resources right here. So to do that I'm going to need uh, to animate the resource. So I need to make sure right, that I have this animate uh, toolbar. So if I don't have it, I just right click and then touch the animate. And so we already use an animate toolbar, right, which is this one. Let me demonstrate. Right. So that's a toolbar. And so we already use the queue animation. Now we're going to animate the resources. And so when I click on it, I can, um, my current library is basic process, but I actually want to use a different library so I'm gonna go ahead and open that library and I'll use uh, uh, a different library and that library is uh, book.plb in book examples folder in the arena so I'm gonna open that one up and this is where I have my um, book PLB oh, library, right? And I have different, so I could select um, my prep A, uh, for example, as a resource, and I can change it to, for the idle state, right? I can change, say, this one. And then for busy, Or let's say the other way, let's say this is going to be my idle. This is going to, or this is going to be my busy. And this is going to be still an active. 
and that's my failed. Uh, also, we don't really have the failures for prep A. And also for uh, prep A, I can put it here. So when it comes, right, the, it will get in here. And then the next thing, I can animate uh, another resource. And that's going to be my prep B. So again, I can change this to be idle. And this one is busy. And this has failed, even though it doesn't really fail here. And I'll place this one here. And I'm going to animate another resource. And this is going to be my um, sealer. And I can select idle and copy that. And then busy gonna be this, and then failed is gonna be this. So you'll have sealer failure, so this will be uh, clear. And my sealer is here. I can move it to a little bit. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna animate the rework resource as well. So have the rework resource. So to do the rework resource, I again right have this one, and then I choose the rework. But the rework was a bottleneck, right? And so there's actually two shifts. So sometimes the capacity is two. So I'm gonna use a different. Uh, different picture for your work to have two here right so I'm gonna do this and this is gonna be my busy state and this is gonna be my failed state and another thing I want to do is I want to have the C's area there so now I'm gonna place it next to this and and so this has my C's area connected to the resource. And I can change it to add another space, right? Because we might have two um, parts. So now I have another space. So I have both of them in here. And let's go ahead and do the C's areas for the rest of the resources to indicate where, where the resources. And then here, another C's area. And here, a C's area. So now, right, if we were to run the simulation, it will go in appear here but we still need to do some of the other things to animate it so we're gonna add additional animation in terms of variables so we're gonna click on variables and add some of those so um, you can see we can either build an expression or we can actually select already the ones that we wanted so let's say we're gonna do variable for scrap number out so when I have uh, transparent background we have about we have a lot of them getting out so um, we can have this format we'll have right alignment no border we can change the font font and select which one we want so let's say we use this bold change color to maroon and 
and then place it. We can also add text to know what what we have. So we get text and we can type in script and then place it here. Um, and if I wanted to change the font, I can change the font here. Maybe make it slightly smaller. And then I will want to do similar things for other, so I can easily copy this and then do some changes. I want this to be salvaged and I need to change the expression so I go here and change from script to salvaged and I'm gonna do this one more time so I'm just gonna paste it and that's gonna be my shipped so I'm gonna go ahead and change the text So shipped and importantly change the variable expression to shipped out, shipped number out. And then I also do some similar things for my, some variables for my work in process for each of the prophecies. So for prep A, prep B, sealer and rework. So again, I'm gonna go here, get my variable, and I don't want this instead of to build the expression. And to get the variable expression, I go to basic process variables, process, and then number in process for prep A. And again, transparent background, no order. So all the same as selected. And I place it here. And I can increase that if I want to. Uh, maybe change uh, the format to smaller number. In terms of work and process, we probably only need So, do a similar thing for the rest of them. And then copy. So, this is um, actually, let's put it here. This needs to be changed. So, as you can see, there is no work in process here for. Um, the prep B so I can either type in the expression and change it or I can again go to process in the basic process variables and then number and process and then select prep B
and then again add another variable for the process that's going to be sealer process change my format a little bit I could move it around if I wanted to and then another variable for the rework so again this is under basic process variables process number and process and that gives us the WIP for the rework process. And then um, again, maybe I have this as my format. So now that we have the variables, the next thing we want to do is to do a plot for the number in Q. So the plot I'm going to add right here. It's going to be the step plot. So again, I'm going to my um, animate um, panel and I'm going to add the step plot here. So I'm going to add the data series and so my name for the data series is going to be number and divorce queue. And I'll get the expression Well, that's not the expression I wanted, so let me build an expression instead. And so I'm gonna go to Q, card number in Q, and then have my rework process Q. So it's gonna be number in Q here. So my access is going to be only time x access and I'll have a title
So I'm going to also have some changes for, for my scale. Actually, we will need to do some more edits here. So let's remove the ad legend and let's make sure that it's going to be step plot. So we change the line, the draw mod mode in the line to stairs in data series. So I go data series, line, and then draw mode, change to stairs because that's a number in Q. And let's change some of the axes. So we select time X axis to add it. And let's change the maximum to uh, 1,600. All right. Lines, we don't need the minor ground lines. False. So we need to do the changes in terms of the scale. Maybe increase the major increment. Um, possibly increase it more. All right, so now we have this plot. We could even increase it a little bit. So now if I run it, this is how it's going to show the animation. So let's let me rewind it. So we ran to completion. Notice there could be a few changes right in terms of the numbers, so we can see them better. I probably would uh, be better off moving them a little bit. And another thing that if you noticed, right, you don't see they kind of disappear as they transfer, right? In order to be able to animate transfer, we would need to do some additional changes and introduce uh, routes. So the next thing they'll do is I'll show you how to do that. Also, I wanted to mention that using these directions I would like for you to individually enhance animation of the variables and plots. So again this is a some of the review of what we did when we enhanced animation of variables. So now please individually enhance animation for entities in model 4.2 by adding variable animation for variables such as number of script parts number of salvage parts and number of ship parts.
and also very importantly, do it on your own. Try to add dynamic plot for the lens of where you work here, just like I showed you. This completes part A, um, or the first part of this lecture that deals with enhancing animation. And the next thing we're going to talk about is how to do the basic modeling of entity transfer. So I'll show you that in the next part.